Sadhguru, I have uh, been a long admirer of yours <laughs> and every person here is here because they love you <laughs> and uh, I think uh, I could include myself in that. I'm reminded of uh, a very powerful quote that I repeat very often and I'm going to share it with all of you here. It's by Baba Diem. It says, in the end, we will love, protect, in the end, we will protect only that what we love. And we will love only that what we learn about. And I think you have been instrumental in making so many of us learn to love nature and ourselves and help us understand that we as human beings are not separate from nature, we are not apart from nature, but we are a part of nature. And what we do to our environment, we are in fact doing to ourselves, our own health. So thank you for that, Sadhguru. Thank you so much. I want to start with a question which is one that is connected to Rally for Rivers. I'm very proud to have participated in that campaign. It was a movement that galvanized civil society like no other. And it has seen a kind of participation that is unprecedented. And I know that your concern and love for India's rivers is deep. And I think the, the theme of beat plastic pollution is so deeply connected with Rally for Rivers that you came forward as well to say that this is something we have to do. Can you share with us what in your experience is, of course, the greatest need for India's rivers and how you have connected the message of beat pollution to rally for rivers? Namaskaram and... Uh... <laughs> Welcome to your warm day. <laughs> it's uh, wonderful to have Eric and uh, Dia here. Well, unfortunately we are still looking at uh, a mega problem in small pieces. But uh, that's how it works in the world. So we are focusing on one at a time. But this is not a, a separate problem, these are all just one problem. Essentially, this problem is about the way we live. Essentially, that we as life have forgotten that we are life. We as life have forgotten that our life has something to do with every other life. Not just in the impact that we cause, as existence, our life's existence is connected to everything around us. And there is no such thing really as in and out because what is in me and what's outside of me because every day something is coming in, something is going out. People say nearly seven kilograms of uh, intake and exchanges happening per day. So, we've just lost contact with life, our own life and everything else that nourishes our life. This is the fundamental disaster, which is manifesting in so many different ways in the world. In our country, this land which was referred to as the land of seven rivers at one time, because as we know, both in this nation and everywhere else, most civilizations always thrived on riverbanks because water being the source of life. But today, uh, I'm not a environmentalist in any sense, but from my personal experience, I've seen rivers depleting in, a, in an alarming way from how I have seen them thirty, forty years ago and how they are today is uh, no more a small concern, it is a… it is a serious problem, it's… 
if we don't handle this in war footing. I'm using the word war intentionally because every day the way we're living is a war. It's a war with everything. At least let's reverse the war <laughs> towards our well-being. It has to be done like we have a war on our hands because the condition is… condition of the land, the soil and water in the country is alarming, very alarming, okay? With 1.4 billion people on your hands or 1.3 billion people on your hands, allowing soil and water to get depleted like this is… Uh, <laughs> we… we… we still kind of in God's hands, we have not taken the nation in our hands, that's what it means <laughs> So, if we have to take charge of this, it's very important, the rivers. Rivers are a measurable entity because water is depleting, you can see it, but this depletion is happening in the air, this depletion is happening in every possible way. They may not all be as dramatic as water shortages, so we picked on water to start with. Now plastic uh, has been the theme of United Nations and it is a very deep concern. Plastic is a classic case of who we are right now, how irresponsib irresponsible we are as human beings because out of many materials that we have developed on this planet, plastic is one of the most fantastic materials. I know a whole lot of people will get against me for this. I am saying this because a material that can be recycled thousands of times over and over again is a perfect material to make sure that the… what we use is in a cycle, that we don't have to continuously dig something new. We can use the same material for centuries if we handle it right. But we have handled it so irresponsibly, such a wonderful material has become poisonous, it has entered everything. They're saying all… a whole lot of microbes are carrying plastic in them. Maybe if a lot of plastic gets into you, you can do your morning yoga better, maybe you'll be a little more flexible. If that's what you're thinking, that's not how it works <laughs> So, this has been a profound concern to me always, but uh, to bring attention, it took a certain amount of time. I'm glad now the nation is sitting up and listening at least. It's time to act, it's not time to debate, it's time to act and uh, I have done so much work with people in the last thirty-six years and variety of issues. But though there are so many wonderful people who will immediately respond, I don't believe the larger population will correct things by themselves. They need the push of law. That's why for everything we are saying we need a policy because without the push of law, the larger population uh, will not move and if they take hundred years to change their ways, that's not good enough. If it has to change quickly, law has to come into place. That is why we are looking at single-use plastic ban. Thank you so much, Sadhguru. That was deeply insightful. I'm going to turn now to Eric Solheim to tell us why the United Nations Environment Program chose beat plastic pollution as the theme for this World Environment Day. Eric, would you please let us know why? Good, good morning to everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, a couple of days back, uh, we were in uh, Andhra Pradesh, beautiful state in the south. We were traveling and we were first watching a number of farmers are transforming their agriculture into nature-based farming. Uh, fantastic to see beautiful trees, a fantastic landscape, hardworking farmers. Then all of a sudden we came to some open fields and full of plastic. Uh, in the most beautiful, spectacular, fantastic parts of India, again, and the number of plastic, plas plastic bags, plastic pollution of all sorts. A couple of days later we went from Agra up here to Delhi, uh, watching out of the windows again, plastic upon plastic along the railway line. Uh, this is bad. Uh, this as, is, as Sadhguru said when we went to Mahatma Gandhi's uh, memorial, he said, th this is violence, this is violence against Mother Earth. It must stop. 
is I mean is visibly horrible. Do we want to see this rather than to see the incredible beauty of the Indian nature? But it's also violence against our common human being. Because well two days back a whale was dying in Thailand. It had been eating 60 plastic bags. Can you believe it? In the stomach of the whale was 60 plastic bags. Before it died, it vomited plastic bags, and then it died. It's not just this whale. We had a whale in Norway died in the similar circumstances, and other whale in, in Spain. Uh, there was elephants dying in Kerala. You see calves, you see uh, camels, sea turtles, seabirds dying from eating plastic. So this is when we push this, as you say, wonderful, mat wonderful material out in nature. Well, we are killing our common uh, cre creatures on planet Earth, uh, all the animals. But at the end of the day, it's violence against ourselves. Because do we really want to drink drinking water, the source of life? And in this drinking water, there are small fragments of plastic. An Indian non-government organization made a survey of the best drinking water on the planet. Not the worst. The drinking water which is put into bottles coming from mountains, from the Himalayas or from the old Alps. I mean, the drinking water we really believe is the best. But even in that drinking water, nearly everywhere on planet Earth, there were small fragments of plastic which we drink, get into our body, and by the way, if we eat fish from the oceans, this fish has been eating microbes, shellfish, small uh, other, other, other creatures, and then plastic gets into the fish and then into our body. So I think there is no doubt we need to change. We need to change for the sake of Mother Earth. We need to change for the sake of the animal kingdom. But we need to change for the sake of ourselves. This is in the most simple and clear terms, I hope, why we have started this global campaign, let's beat plastic pollution. And I'm happy to say uh, that we are so proud that the Indian government, Prime Minister Modi, but the government, but of course many other political forces, since it's not just Prime Minister Modi, it's the chief ministers of many states, even some of them against the Prime Minister, they have all picked up this cause because they believe, believe in change and believing in, in making India clean. And finally, remind yourself that the greatest of all Indians, maybe the greatest of all human beings, and for sure one of the greatest human beings who has ever walked on planet Earth, Mahatma Gandhi, he said it very rightly, he said, cleanliness is godliness. And I think he said that because he thought it was not God's plan that we humans should pollute this Mother Earth. It was God's plan that we should cater for Mother for this earth as we cater for our children. This is the most beautiful one planet we do have and we need to take good care of it. Thank you so much, Eric. I'll just quickly add why I chose to become an ad advocate for beat plastic pollution, not just because I'm a UN Environment Goodwill Ambassador, but it resonated so strongly with me personally as well, Sadhguru. Um, it's very, you know, plastic has become such a permeable part of our lives, everyday lives, that we don't see plastic. You know, our morning starts with a plastic toothbrush. And uh, when I was traveling through, I did this uh, show called Ganga, the Soul of India, and I had to travel from the source of the river all the way to sea. And I traveled through five states of India tra with, the, with the river. And, you know, when you see the the plastic waste in the most pristine parts of the country, in pure nature, natural environment, where there is no human habitat, but plastics have reached there, uh, it really hits you. You know, you, you realize that the source of the river was so pristine, so pure, so clean. And somewhere along the way, the moment human settlement emerges, you start seeing the pollution in the river and the plastics in the river. And then I also noticed along my way that plastic waste was being incinerated. It was being burnt. Plastics had reached places where electricity has not reached. And I kept thinking, there are no collection systems here. There's no management systems here. What is this going to do to the health of the people here? And it got me really, really worked up and 
passionate about trying to seek solutions. And I want to quickly share for all of you who are wondering what can we do to beat plastic pollution, here's what I may be able to suggest to you because me and many others have been able to incorporate this into our lives. And I hope that all of us can because then we will truly become a part of the beat plastic pollution movement. We at the United Nations Environment Program are encouraging and urging everyone to stop the use of single-use plastics, which means refuse plastic bags. Of course, Sadhguru, your campaign expresses that very, very profoundly. Yes. Stop the use of plastic bags. Carry if you cloth use it, bags. Uh, if you use it, you use it like this. You understand what you're doing to the entire planet. <laughs> I know it's just terrible, and I, I, it's suffocating and choking our waterways, our air, our soil, and it's harming health, children, elders, and just everyone and animals, of course. So, say no to plastic bags, carry your own cloth bag, it weighs lighter than a mobile phone. Say no to plastic straws. Before you order your drink, please tell the server not to give you a straw. We can easily sip our drinks, we don't need to, you know. It's so lazy, no, Sadhguru, having to suck on the straw. Uh, <laughs> this was, uh, <laughs> you know, in India, in South India, in Telugu, we call it palchambu. What it means is, for a cup, there will be a steel straw. This is only for babies. Once you become by seven, eight years of age, you'll learn to drink from a cup directly. But once again, the entire so-called civilized world is back to drinking in straws. I was in Moscow, just now, today morning I came. Even for water in a restaurant, they're putting a straw for water. So we have lost our ability to use our lips to latch onto the cup and drink water. <laughs> I saw an amazing image, Sadhguru, yesterday of a young girl who posted an image for hashtag beat plastic pollution and she showed how she was drinking coconut water directly from the coconut. Oh. It was a very powerful image. What do you mean? We all drink like that only. We should be, but we don't. <laughs> Most people drink it with a plastic straw. Okay. okay, so the third item of plastics that we can easily refuse are plastic mugs and cups. We can carry our own mugs and cups and uh, whenever oh, the youngsters here and of course people who frequent coffee shops can carry their own mugs. Um, the, the, the other item of single-use plastic we can easily say no to is packaged water, bottles of water. Now here, I'm constantly told, but it's so inconvenient. You know, when you're traveling, you're on the move, it's difficult, you need to rehydrate, how do we do it? Sadhguru, I met a lady yesterday, amazing, amazing young lady. Eric and I were blown by her, mind blown. She's 32 years old. She gave up single-use plastics at the age of 22. When she found out that India was hosting World Environment Day, she thought, what can I do to spread the message to encourage more people to stop the use of single-use plastics? So Rajeshwari Singh set a foot as a solo traveler from Vadodara all the way to Delhi and she did not carry packaged water. When I asked her, how did you rehydrate yourself? How did you hydrate yourself? You walked through highways and villages and towns and cities doing workshops, meeting people in this heat, in the scorching heat alone with no support. She said, you know, India is an amazing country. Every 500 meters, you have matkas with water that good Samaritans place on the highways for people to hydrate themselves. And every village and town I visited, people were always happy to give me water. That's one thing that is the easiest thing to get. I travel with my metal bottle, Sadhguru, so that really helps. So no more lazy answers for replacing the packaged plastic bottle with metal bottles and carrying our own water to work and school and wherever it is we are going. Uh, the most, the, one of the biggest hazards and the last item of single-use plastics, I'm sure all of us who discover how bad plastics are for the environment, uh, especially the wasted plastic, we will discover that 
packaged food, like, you know, the, that horrible thing, styrofoam, and then the cling wrap over four apples and two apples and two bananas. We can say no to that. There is absolutely no reason why we should be buying our vegetables and fruits packaged in plastic. And the other thing that we must absolutely learn to say no to is cutlery and spoons made in plastic. Would you like to add anything to that, Sadhguru? This crazy behavior of ours, of convenience that is destroying our environment and our health? Uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful whoever this lady Rajeshwari, what singer? Rajeshwari Singh. Okay. It's wonderful that she took up this mission. But I want you, all of you to understand, uh, there are many people who are from my generation. They did not give up plastic, they, we never started off on plastic. It's, it's only in the last fifteen, twenty years that this has happened. Uh, we never really used plastic like that. And if at all, if a plastic cover, once in a way a plastic cover comes home, my mother would fold it and keep it for future use and this same cover will be using it for two, three years, a simple plastic cover. So this was very much there with us, we've lost it only in the last two decades. So it's not so difficult to just go back and live as we were living at that time. So I cannot say I gave up single-use plastic, but we largely never used it. Here and there it comes to you today almost everything that you buy in the market, but uh, I'm not somebody who'll buy bananas in a supermarket. I know where to buy bananas <laughs> So bananas don't come in a plastic bag, they come as a front <laughs> So these are all important, whatever you're saying, these are all nominal things that we must do to express our commitment. But the solution, because the problem is bigger, the solution also needs to be approached as such. For example, right now, nearly forty percent of plastic is in packaging. This is the area that we need to address big time because this is one thing that can be easily avoided. It's possible to avoid this. Bottled water is about I think eight to nine percent of the plastics used in the world, nearly half a trillion bottles every year we are manufacturing. I've been in conversation with some of the largest bottle, pet bottle manufacturers who are manufacturing over sixty, seventy percent of the world's pet bottles, supplying to all the major water, uh, you know, the water industry and also the software, soft drink industry. They are all willing to change right now. I think those changes must be pushed. We want the local governments to push, Indian government, we will approach in so many different ways to do this. They themselves, the industry themselves have realized for their own survival, they have to do this. Right now, uh, these companies have come in collaboration with a few other universities from Netherlands and also a few other marketing companies and uh, trying to make PET a, a continuous recycling process. That is, you never have to replace it. The same bottles can be used and reused for almost forever. It's possible to do that. Changing lifestyles is important, but we are talking about seven and a half billion people. Changing all their lifestyles is going to be a long-term plan. And by the time you change one generation, the next generation has gotten up and doing something else. So by law, bringing that recycling must happen. For these things to happen, one important point is, see there are many grades of plastic, it's not one grade. Some of them are completely not recyclable, they must be banned, absolutely. Among the recyclable, uh, recyclable plastics, there are so many varieties. In United States, they told me, we're uh, approaching some major industry with these solutions right now, we've formed a powerful group of people there. For example, I'm just telling you a simple example. Because uh, we were in US, we were talking about the Coke bottles. These bottles are easily recyclable. But simply because of the paper label, 
on it, you cannot recycle. If you recycle with the paper label, it gets downgraded, it won't be food grade plastic. Or the plastic label. Huh? Or the plastic label. Uh, generally it's a paper label. If it is of the same material label, then it would be easy to recycle. If it was plastic and same grade plastic, it would be re easy to recycle. Now they have paper labels. There is a plastic wrap around it, but it's actually a paper label. So well, now we are talking to companies who are capable of printing on the bottle. So we want to go to the businesses with solutions, not just protesting against them, not trying to destroy businesses, because that's not going to work, because the economic concerns of a business and the economic concerns of a nation are important. And above all, this has been the way, unfortunately, this is what we changed with Rally for Rivers. Always it is economy versus ecology. I'm asking all of you who are here, suppose there is a fight between ecology and economy, what do you think will win in your home, in your community, in your country? Economy, of course. Because people are thinking economy is today's concern, ecology is tomorrow's concern. No, ecology is today's concern. If this has to happen, we have to find solutions which will go with the existing polluting businesses. It's very important. Those businesses which are the major factors of pollution, we have to transform them, making sure their businesses are not destroyed but transformed to a more ecologically sensitive way of operation. This has to be looked at on all levels. You can just tell a local vendor you can't use plastic. What is he supposed to use? We must go and tell him this is what you can use, what is alternate product and how he can use it and how it is more beneficial for him and the customer. These things have to be brought about rather than simply protesting against business and industry because long run that's not going to work, economy will win. So if ecology has to win, you have to marry ecology and economy, they have to get married. This is my effort <laughs> Eric, this is timely to ask you because Sadhguru has mentioned the umbilical link between ecology and economy. And he's also mentioned, I think in his own way, circular economy. And I want you to elaborate what that means because we all know that 90% of uh, bottles, package bottles, are not recycled, which means that new plastic is being used. Yeah, each but in time. India it is recycled quite yes, substantially. Yes, it is. But the percentage is low, Sadhguru. Yeah. That's not the because of ecological concerns, that is because of economic depravity. Every bottle some little child picks up and makes there's some lot, little money. Yes, of course, there's yes. money in plastic. So that's what the circular economy is. Uh, Eric, will you please share uh, what the circular economy means and how much money there can be in managing our waste better, our plastic waste better, because it's something that will encourage Sadhguru, many more people to take up the action to manage plastic better. Uh, let me start by one other comment, because Sadhguru is my man. <laughs> for, for a very simple reason, he brings together the two necessary perspectives, the change of the individual and the change of society, and economics and politics. I mean, when we change lifestyle, if you start avoiding one-use plastic, throwing away the straws, uh, not using plastic bags when you go to the supermarket, well, it's a small act, one individual acting. It's important because together we are a big force, but of course, changing lifestyle like that is also a very, very clear signal. It's a signal to political leaders and to business that we need to change. And if you influence your neighbors to do the same, even stronger signal to political leaders and business that we need to change. So changing your lifestyle, yes, it's important by itself, but it's also having an influence on the rest of, of, of the people. That's, of course, also what Mahatma Gandhi so well understood. He changed his lifestyle, but not just because he thought one individual can change the world, but it was a message to wider India as to how, how, how to act. So let's bring these together. And indeed, we need laws and regulations from political leaders, and we need business to change. But one small example, the other day we were in Mumbai. 
and we wanted to buy plastic cutlery in Mumbai. Not <laughs> that we wanted to have the plastic cutlery, but we wanted to make a video where very visible I picked up uh, plastic cutlery and throw it away. But then we started going to shops in Maharashtra, trying to buy plastic cutlery, and they said, no, uh, if you want to buy plastic cut cutlery, please go to another state. <laughs> because here in Maharashtra, it's prohibited, we don't have it. That's of course how it works. When you get laws, and by the way, when the laws are implemented, then it has this profound effect, but it starts by individuals demanding this from political leaders. If you want to understand uh, what, recycle, uh, what a circular economy is about, I can't think of anything better than this cell phone. The first cell phone of this type, the smartphone, we can date it. It was shown to the world in 2007 by a very innovative man called Steve Jobs, the founder of, of Apple in the United States. In California, he held up this kind of smartphone. That was 11 years back from now. And I give a bet that everyone in this audience, absolutely everyone, now has a smartphone. Nearly the entire global middle class has a smartphone. Even many poor people have. And those poor people who don't have the smartphone for sure have another uh, uh, mobile phone. Close to every human being above the age of seven or eight now has a cell phone. This has gone in 11 years. And of course, there is enormous benefit from us in having these smartphones. We can get into any number of information. Well, if you no want to know, say, how Mahatma Gandhi lived, well, you, you just make a couple of, couple of uh, pushes here, and you get every information about Mahatma Gandhi. And if you don't want to know about Mahatma Gandhi, but do you want to know about Donald, Donald Trump? Well, you do exactly the same. But there is an issue. We will close between 10 billion people on planet Earth. All of them above maybe the age of five, we want a cell phone, which is good. But can we buy a new cell phone every year or every second year and just throw it away with all its minerals, all the poison, all the problems which is there? I, I think you all know the answer. There is not enough minerals on planet Earth for us to buy one and throw it away every second year. Well, we need to go into a circular economy, which means that whatever is in the cell phone is used again. Because here is minerals from Congo, this component in one cell phone from 30, 40 nations. It may be put together in China because most cell phones are put together in China. But they are components from the entire globe. And we need to use them over and over again. So what is in my cell phone today is in your cell phone tomorrow and Sadhguru's cell phone the next, next year. That's true Still, with our bodies also. Sorry? That's true with our bodies also. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's how we were living in the past. Uh, we just used to take this into the modern world. Of course, you will still get a cell phone which is more technologically advanced with more feature just used by the, uh, by the materials which we reuse. And of course, the same with plastic. I mean, we, how, why do we use plastic materials which we cannot use again? Putting on, as you say, paper labels which make it impossible to recycle it. If we bring in the plastic we, uh, we, uh, we, um, uh, we produce, uh, the problem will be, uh, be over. And very simple suggestion, uh, and that will be my final comment. Uh, in the I attended a number of the beach cleanups in India. And one key, uh, key uh, product you get on nearly all beaches are these bags for, for milk. You, uh, milk, milk. Milk bags. Milk pouches, yes. Milk pouches, yeah. Uh, it, there's any number of them. Half a liter, one liter, 250 centimeter. Hard-working mothers feeding their children, but then throwing away these. Well, if you put a levy of one, one rupee on these, these uh, pouches or these bags, you pay one rupee more when you buy it, but you get the rupee back when you hand it in. There's no loss for all those people are handing in, only those who 
purchase and don't hand, the, hand in, will be punished. We'll get in nearly all. Because most people will hand them in. And if they don't hand them in, someone else will come and pick, pick the, the bags and hand them in to get the money. Then you create a circular Im economy where the plastic is used, but then reused. Thank you, Eric. That was very insightful. I'm sure all of us have understood now what it means to have a circular economy. Sadhguru, I'm looking at that clock and I'm feeling very sad. <laughs> this is coming to an end, this wonderful conversation. Thank you for your time, Sadhguru. Thank you for your time, Eric. This has been deeply insightful. I know that we could continue to speak for a longer time. But let us all pledge to continue to engage together and find solutions to beat plastic pollution. Let's not allow this campaign to end with World Environment Day, but continue it every day till we have truly beaten the menace that plastic waste is creating in our lives and to the health of our environment. And of course, if we want to go beyond that, let's find ways to reuse, recycle, upcycle, and reduce our consumption of plastics. Thank you so much. Namaskaram. Yes, have a wonderful World Environment Day. And to everybody watching all over the world, thank you for your unbelievable participation. We are proud to host World Environment Day in India. And this is an even more proud moment for all of us to be seated here with Sadhguru and all of you wonderful people here who have joined us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. this, uh, you uh, use the word upcycle. And uh, I think uh, that is an important phenomenon. A few young entrepreneurs, uh, I, again coming from Maharashtra, in many ways uh, Maharashtra means a great state. At least uh, for ecological concerns, it is becoming a great state for sure. Because uh, even for Alley for Rivers, the first immediate action on the ground has happened in Maharashtra. And this upcycling of using plastic material to not to just recycle it to a downgraded material, but to actually make it into a better product than what it originally was. This is beginning to happen, young entrepreneurs are taking it up and doing it. But still, I insist that across the world, United Nations uh, agencies, environment uh, groups must work for stringent laws. Because awareness is fine, it's wonderful, people's participation is always moving, a woman drinking tender coconut is romantic, but solutions are in transforming the businesses which are involved in this. Right now, nations, large nations, have been sending all their plastic waste to other nations, as if if you dump it in another part of the world, their job is done. So right now in 2018, January 2018, China has refused some twenty and odd different types of plastic. China was literally recycling almost sixty, seventy percent of the world's plastic. And uh, now, this plastic which China refuses to take, United Nations should make sure it doesn't go to Africa or it doesn't go to Antarctica or somewhere else worse. So, the the rich nations, affluent nations must recycle their plastic, not dump it in another nation. This is very important, these steps must be taken. Awareness is great. Uh, I'm sure all of them will strive to bring this awareness to their life, their children, their, children, their neighbors, their friends. I'm sure every one of them will do that. But still, large-scale action by law is a must. Thank you very much, Eric, for being here for this event. And uh, if all of you can just hold up this thing for a moment. I know this is more plastic bag, but people in this country, if something has to happen, you have to create an emotional movement. By policy, this country doesn't really move, you have to create a very strong emotional movement, just uh, holding up so that this bit plastic is good. But people must understand this is not a, a foreign problem, we are suffocating ourselves, this must be clearly understood. Thank you very much for being here. If you're willing, after our guests leave, I will 
I love you to roast in the sun for some more time. If you're willing, I'll come back. <laughs>